Hello fiber friends! Welcome to another episode of Vlogmas. Today I have Kirk with me. Uh, this antique wheel is from the 1800s and so I'm doing a little a little historical dress here. Don't look too closely because this is just throwing together what I had, <laughs> but I just wanted the aesthetic more than like a particular accuracy because we have a story today called Grandmother's Spinning Wheel. And this will all make sense, I promise, but we need to open up our box today for Vlogmas. And just before we get to that, I have an announcement. I am so excited because we are going to have more giveaways. I have a fantastic fiber friend named Lori, who has just been such a supporter of this channel. She's been here since the very beginning. I think Lori was probably the first one to watch my first video after Mark. <laughs> So Lori has so graciously donated. Um, well, I should grab it so you can see it. Okay, I got it. <laughs> Lori has generously donated this box. It is from Wild Wool Farm. I have done several projects with Wild Wool Farm and I will link those videos if you'd like to go see some of the other things they had. One was about the breed Navajo Churro and another video that I did was the cloth that I spun and wove in one day. <laughs> that was an exciting video. I'm not sure where that piece of cloth is right now. I've been wearing it like a scarf and using it as sort of a, a cloth on my table. It's been a wonderful a wonderful little piece of fabric. So um, yeah, I did those with Wild Wolf Farms. They're fantastic and Arlene over there has incredible fiber. And so Lori is also a supporter of Wild Wolf Farms and had this extra fiber that she wanted to donate for a giveaway on the channel. So Lori, thank you so, so much for your generosity. And I know that you all want to see what's in here, but I can't <laughs> open it. I mean, I'm going to open it, but I don't want to open it because I want to keep it when I look at it because it's so gorgeous. But no, <laughs> we're giving this away. Ooh, it's full of goodies. Here is what is in the box. We have some lovely tea and a stitch marker. And then we also have these incredible, incredible roll eggs. Aren't these absolutely stunning? They are, I mean, I don't wanna mess them up, but I want you to see, they are so deep down into this box. There's so many of them. Uh, this is one of their roll egg boxes. This is the same product. It's not the same wool, but it's the same product that I used to spin that cloth I was referencing. So if you wanted to watch that video, you could do the same thing with this, it is Merino, Coriadale, Lincoln, and Sari Silk. It's absolutely beautiful. So how could you win this box? Well, <laughs> you can leave a comment on this video and that will be your entry to win this box. I will announce the winner for this giveaway on Saturday. I will put the date for which date that is here. <laughs> the entry to win is this video. Hopefully the next video I will be able to announce the next giveaway and the next giveaway is going to run through the rest of all of the Vlogmas videos. So stay tuned for that. Make sure you are subscribed if you aren't subscribed. And yeah, for the comment, let me know in the comments if you watch Hallmark movies at this time of year, what's your favorite Hallmark movie? I'm going to say that my favorite probably, I don't watch a lot of them, and it doesn't have to be specifically Hallmark, but just kind of that genre of meat, cute, spilled cocoa, save the, <laughs> save the family tool store in the small town, fall in love, get married, or whatever. <laughs> on Christmas. I don't know. <laughs> that type of movie. Generally, that 
type of movie is not my thing. Last year I watched A Castle for Christmas and I did it solely because of the knitting and I loved it just for the knitting. That knitting group was fantastic. They were real knitters and they actually were teaching people on the set and the other actors and everybody to knit and I thought that was fantastic. So Castle for Christmas was fun for me. And that leads into the story for today. So leave the leave your comment about your favorite Hallmark type movie for this time of year in the comments below and maybe uh, say why you like that one or why I should check it out maybe. I don't know. <laughs> but the story that we have for today is like an old timey meet cute Hallmark type story with a spinning wheel. So I'm excited to share this story with you. I will do it while I'm spinning, but before I can spin, I have to have some something to spin. So let's open the next Vlogmas box. Here we go. I put the other boxes back in here because I didn't want it to look empty. We're already on day four. We're making our way through the top row. I guess <laughs> once we get through number six, I'll have to swap rows so I can get to the other ones easily, but I just didn't want it to look so empty. Today is day number four, and our blessing says, may your spindle, hooks, and needles never get lost in your couch. I am pretty sure every single one of us can relate to that. <laughs> I could probably go clean out my couch right at this moment and find at least stitch markers <laughs> at the very least. <laughs> the goodie that we have for today is, it is a custom Katrinkles stitch marker and it says Jillian Eve Vlogmas 22 with a little basket of balls of yarn in the middle. So I hope you enjoy that exclusive Vlogmas stitch marker. And here is the fiber. Here is the fiber for today. This is Polworth wool. It is hand painted, so it's a little bit variegated. It should have a little bit of kind of some peachy yellows, um, some reds, sort of orangey kind of red to it. And it is supposed to remind us of Maybe not these flames, because these are pretty yellow, but sort of the, the like rich flickery coal kind of flames. I am going to spin up this single with this spinning wheel in just a moment. And my plan for this yarn is to add some beads. Now I have some it's just some shimmery, shiny embroidery thread. There are two different ways that you can add beads. Um, kind of the most common ways. I'm sure there are other ways, but one way is to put the beads on thread and then ply with the thread and kind of scoot the beads up into the ply so they get incorporated into the yarn as you go. And the other way is to chain ply and when you pull up that loop, you use a crochet hook to place a bead onto the loop. So we will have to figure out and decide which way we want to add the beads to this fiber. I will be doing that tomorrow in a live stream. So you'll have to catch the live stream. I will have that scheduled so you can check it out on the channel and see what we're gonna do. Maybe we'll do a little of both, I'm not sure. But I do know that for today, I will be spinning this with my antique wheel, Kirk. Did you know that through history, a lot of people would spin next to a fireplace because the warmth of the fire would melt the lanolin in the wool and make it easier to spin. Isn't that wonderful? Although this doesn't have lanolin in it because this is scoured and dyed and it's been rinsed a bunch. <laughs> um, but I just love that thought of uh, people hanging out together by the warm fire and their cozy wool <laughs> melting in the, you know, just a little bit so it's all nice and easy to spin. I have done some spinning in the grease. That's what we call it when there's still lanolin in the wool. 
and I find that it drafts very easily. It's like the lanolin lubricates the fibers and so it's easy to draft them very, very thin. If I want like a gossamer lace, that's, uh, that's the way I would love to do that. But I'm not gonna do a gossamer lace because it just takes so long. <laughs> it takes so long. So I am going to do a long draw and I'm going to use Kirk here. And so I think it's time that we get spinning and enjoy our story called Grandmother's Spinning Wheel. Grandma's Spinning Wheel by Anna McCall May. Copyright 1912. Preface. Near the headwaters of the beautiful Chesapeake Bay in my Maryland stands Beach Home, the scene of the true incident related in this simple story. A quaint old dwelling, low and white, nestles moss-crowned adown the lane. It seems to rest, its work well done, in varied scenes its part it bore, but time has lightly laid his hand on beam and eave and latch and door. Athwart the yard great beech trees cast a shade so deep that scarce at noon the sun rays dare invade the spot. They even deny the friendly moon. A garden sweet with box and shrub and borders in old-time array. A hillside orchard where in spring the songbirds trill their roundelay. A brooklet winding through the mead, a fern-clad glen with mossy rock. A spacious barn whose autumn hoard gives want and idleness the mock. A sweet old picture fair to view is this quaint homestead low and white, its shaded lawn and vine-clad porch to peaceful rest and dream invite. Amid the valley, lovers roam, while children vie the hills to mount. Then gather round the kindly board, and hear Grandma her tales recount of youth and hope when life was fair, her form unbent, her eye yet bright, of other groups once gathered there in that old dwelling low and white, of winter nights when gathered round the oaken fire blazing high, mid whir of wheels to drown the blast, they little reckoned how time flew by of spinning wheels with flyers sharp that caught the heedless in their whirl, of glances cast across the fire by lovelorn youth or roguish girl, the varied pranks that Cupid played, the god was there in all his might, amid the wheels his bow to draw gave him full measure of delight. One day, as Grandma softly slept and smiling dreamed of life when fair, the children to the attic crept to see what treasures might be there. And wandering round beneath the eaves for nook or niche in which to peer, their keen eyes spied amid the gloam with cobwebs twined an object queer. With eager hold, they drew it forth and brushed the dust wreaths from around, then bore it merrily to show Grandma the odd thing they had found. A wheel between two rods, they said, a board aslant, some hooks of steel. What is its name, and what is its use, and why in the attic thus conceal? Our grandma's face there came a smile, as one who would sweet thoughts reveal, and tenderly her lips replied, Ah, oh, me, my dear old spinning wheel. Ah, oh, darlings, little can you dream what memories sweet wake at the name. Again I see myself a girl around the fire, see the same? Dear faces, feel the warmth and glow, and up and up the bright sparks fly. No idlers there, with mirth and song we each our busy fingers ply. And round and round the noisy wheels go merrily as fast we spin, while higher grows the fleecy pile and louder waxes mirthful din. Full well we knew that Farmer John would soon appear his aid to lend, bashful his mien but true his heart, in storm or sunshine ever our friend. We all knew well he loved our best, but she was wild and paid no heed to Farmer John's imploring looks, no matter how his eyes might plead. The spinning wheel was turned so fast, its whirring speed all else would drown, while mockingly her laugh rang out, and downcast John would sighing frown. Thus time rolled on, the months passed by, John's hope grew dim, nor gold seemed near. One eve again in wanted place he closer drew that Bess might hear. But she was in her wildest mood, and whirring drove the spinning wheel. One look, alas, and then John's hand was caught in flyers' hooks of steel. Ah! Gone were the mirth and mischief then, and Bess stood by a maid demure. With pitying looks and fingers deft, she into shreds her kerchief tore. 
bound up the wound, spoke words of cheer. Ah, Bess, what did your face reveal? For bashful John now spoke outright, and quiet stood the spinning wheel. The hurt the flyers make is slight, with deeper wound, my heart is scarred. Heal this wound too, list to my plea, too long the wheel and I have warred. And did she then? the children asked. Did this wild Bess her fault atone? Just then, within the open door, Grandfather's smiling, kind face shone. Hey, wife, what now? The children here? What mischief do these rogues conceal? What have we here? Why, bless my heart! Is that your same old spinning wheel? Good cause have I to know this wheel. Let me the busy flyers see. You mind the night they caught my hand? Look, here's the mark they left on me. What's in the air? Grandfather turned with puzzled look. The group to view, but only hears the merry shout. Oh, dear sly grandma, Bess was you. In churchyard shade, dear grandma rests, and by her side sleeps Farmer John. The low white house is standing yet, but all the old time folks are gone. The spinning wheel no more abides with cobwebs wreathed in corner alone. It rests with ribbons gaily decked while memory speaks of Farmer John. Still stand the beech trees o'er the spring, with loving reach their branches spread. Beneath the shade, the children play, and youth and maiden softly tread. Friends, I hope you enjoyed the story of Grandmother's Spinning Wheel. And I look forward to plying with you tomorrow when we are live. I also wanted to show you, because we're doing beads for this project, if you wanted to get your own beads, these are the beads that I will be using. I got these at Michael's. They are size six zero. They're just seed beads and the color is called tangerine. Um, but you can find any color of seed beads like this that you enjoy. The thread that I'll be using is 100% polyester. It's just a shimmery uh, kind of embroidery thread. Any thread will work any polyester or utility purpose. I like the sparkly Guterman threads. Uh, that will work as well. So that's what I'll be using to do the bead ply. So if you wanted to dig around and see if you had these supplies on hand, you can do that along with me. And if you're curious about what you can do with a bead plied yarn, this shawl, which is one of my favorite shawls, I made it on my triangle loom, and there's a bunch of different hand spuns in here, but one of the hand spuns that's in here, this one right here, has a bead plied with the yarn. You can see some of the beads along there. Doing a thread plied beaded yarn is a really cool way to incorporate beads into a woven project like this without having to individually stitch the beads onto the finished project like you're embroidering with the beads on there. Um, so it's kind of a cool shortcut to that plus it's just a lot of fun. So I look forward to doing that with you. If you don't make it live, if you're watching this sometime in the future, I will have a link to the live video at the end of this one. And in case you were wondering about an update on my linen dress that I'm sewing, I did get the sleeves done today. I did a French seam on the sleeves, which is just very lovely, and I think it helps the linen stay secure because linen just loves to unravel. Um, but it was a lot of uh, stitching and ironing and stitching again. <laughs> but I think it came out really lovely. I'm almost done with my dress. I still have to do the collar and then I need to finish the hems on the sleeves and the bottom of the dress and then it's finished. But I was able to try it on and it does fit. So I'm very excited to show that to you maybe in the next video, we'll see. <laughs> All right, friends, I will see you next time. Don't forget to leave a comment to enter the giveaway. Happy spinning.